Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome to this fourth day of the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, Civil Aviation Regulations 2021 Draft Regulations Considerations or Stakeholder Engagement. This morning, we are going to look at a number of regulations, starting with the Draft Civil Aviation Rules of the Air Regulations. Then we will address the Draft Civil Aviation Aerodrome Design and Operation Regulations. Then we will address the draft heliports regulation, draft civil aviation aerodrome certification, licensing and registration regulations, the draft aeronautical charts regulations, the draft meteorological services for air navigation regulations, and the draft units of measurements used to be used in air and ground operations. And finally, the draft construction of visual and instrument flight procedures regulation. So we have a full plate of uh, about eight sets of regulations and we anticipate that by the end of the day we will have gone through that so before we go further into the day i would like to invite uh, david david is our manager ans aerodromes uh oversight to be able to commit this day in prayer and then we'll continue the briefing for the day before we start hey david thank you uh, participants and colleagues, welcome to this session today. As the moderator has indicated, we are just about to begin. And uh, before we do so, may go down for our prayer. Kind and loving master in heaven, we come before thee this morning with thanksgiving and appreciation. We thank you for the gift of life and opportunity that you've given us to gather here this morning for purposes of uh, this webinar. I'm also for having been with us for the last three days or so, now that we're on the fourth day. Father, we pray that uh, as we start, we start with you. We commit ourselves in the hands that even the interactions that we shall have, focusing on various aspects of our provisions as the authority. Father, we invite the presence to be with us, that even the participants, the stakeholders, the comments, the interactions, and all the activities of the day, how we commit themselves under thy hands, Father, so that we can be able to be with us. Be with us as we commence until the end for this a humble prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, thank you so much for finding time to come, and I hand it over to the moderator. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. So, uh, as I was saying, we have a full set of regulations, but a few housekeeping rules before we start. Uh, as you may recall, we have gone through uh, three days of these considerations. And so far, we have addressed a number of regulations. On the first day, we addressed four regulations. On the second day, we addressed five. And on the third day, we were able to address another six. And therefore, we've gone through halfway through the sets of regulations that are currently under consideration. Number two, you are reminded that even for the sets of regulations you've already considered, if you have anything that has come up that you'd like us to consider or like us to include in the draft regulations, you are invited to send us an email at kcars, K -C -A -R -S, 2021 at kcaa.or.ke. For those who also wish to join us, you are reminded of the joining procedures. You just go to our website, go to the draft regulations and access the tab for this, uh, the link for this uh, activity. If you already registered, scroll down and select the correct session and you'll be able to join us and participate in this session. We also invite you to post your questions, even as the presentation are ongoing, you can post your questions in the questions tab on the top right side on, on the right side of your screen at the bottom there is a blue tab ask a new question if you click on that you can type in any question and at the end of the presentation of the matrix of amendments and at the end of uh, consideration of already received comments we will address your questions finally those who are also desire us to give us a verbal uh, intervention. In the ask a new question, just enter your interest to ask a question. And at the right moment, we will alert you, activate your participate button, which is at the bottom of your screen. And when you click on that button, you will be able to address your question and we can hear you verbally. 
uh, as we wrap up these introductory remarks, uh, I'd also like to remind you that we have received a considerable uh, request to redo the personnel licensing regulations and the Civil Aviation Authority is always uh, willing to address the concerns of the industry and this will be redone on Friday. So on Friday, we will be able to go through personnel licensing regulations for those who may desire to uh, follow up on one of those issues or who had a challenge on the first day, you will be able to access the uh, a redo of the personnel licensing regulations. In the meantime, you can access the draft regulations and the matrix of amendments to allow you adequately prepare for that session. So without further ado, I would like to welcome my colleague. I would like to welcome my colleague Richard Cherop, who will take us through the first sets of regulation this morning, the draft civil aviation rules of the air regulations 2021. Richard. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, as has been introduced, my name is Richard Jerob, uh, ATM and Sergeant Rescue Inspector at the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, this morning, I'm privileged to share with you or uh, to go through with you on the Civil Aviation Rules of Their Regulations, Draft 2021. Uh, these are regulations which are which came uh, as a result of uh, changes in the 2018 regulations, and also take reconnaissance of the dynamics in the uh, aviation industry, which resulted into amendment number 46 to the Annex 2. Uh, and uh, before even uh, we go further, I just want to bring to the attention of all stakeholders and participants that uh, the Annex 2, which is about the rules of there, is uh, rules which, uh, as a state, uh, we have not uh, filed uh, any major difference, or uh, there is no major, there is no difference which has, we has uh, filed with the International Civil Aviation Organization. And uh, to that, uh, it uh, means that uh, we have uh, transposed our the standards which were in these regulations into our standards into our regulations, sorry. And uh, to begin with, uh, and uh, before also I embark on the on the matrix of uh, changes which were as a result of the amendment number about six to the Chicago Convention Annex Two. I would also wish to take the cognizance of the help of the team. I've uh, got uh, comments earlier which they have communicated in the Office of Manager Travel Services and the East team. Uh, everything will be considered and at the term time uh, we'll also uh, one further interaction before these regulations are published. Okay, to begin with uh, the regulations, the rules of their and the, uh, the rules of their regulation 2021 draft is uh, made up of a number of regulations and uh, it is organized into BATs. So uh, I'm sharing with you now what uh, came as a result of uh, amendment number 46. And also these regulations are reviewed from time to time to get into our latest updates. And also if there were any omissions or errors in the previous regulations, we have taken into consideration. Uh, this being our regulations, we also request that uh, if, in case you're not sending, we also propose the authority so that the necessary amendments are being done. So, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, it is my humble now uh, duty to go ahead and uh, start with the presentation matrix on the proposed changes to the civil aviation rules of their regulations 2021. Uh, the first one is on citation. Uh, citation, uh, the first thing on citation is just uh, the year. Whenever any rules are met or uh, regulations are met, there is normally a year which is which these regulations are, are drafted. So uh, it was only a change or um, we only amended the first citation, which is uh, that these regulations may be cited as the rules of the uh, rules of their regulations 2021. So 
uh, it's only what the first the change is only the year. Uh, the second one is on uh, clarity. We, we have reviewed the second, that's on crown visibility. We reviewed it to comply with Annex 2 requirement and uh, it had only, we had only uh, avoided the word automatic systems. Where, have I, where it has been highlighted, it's, uh, it shows the change. Uh, the third one is on uh, tribunal, uh, which as we discussed in the Civil Aviation uh, Certification of Air Navigation Service Regulations, uh, section 66 of the Act uh, had been omitted and uh, now this one has been, uh, we demand the tribunal to say that uh, the tribunal ministers national civil aviation administrative review tribunal established under the civil aviation act so we 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 removed uh, okay instead of uh, putting a section in this particular regulations and uh, knowing also the dynamics where uh, regulations are introduced so we uh, make it for clarity and say that it is just will be in the civil aviation act so this has indicated in the remarks there that uh, the act may be reviewed and the section may uh, and year may change. So we just removed that section and uh, the year of uh, review. On number three, on regulation number three, uh, uh, this is on application. Uh, we and we were saying that uh, this section or uh, the application section was amended for clarity uh, and uh, rearranged accordingly. So uh, these regulations shall apply to every person and every aircraft, including state aircraft, to, to aircraft bearing the nationality and registration mark of Kenya, wherever they may be, to the extent that they do not conflict with the rules published by the state having jurisdiction over the, the territory uh, being overflown. And uh, lastly, these rules apply in full in all, uh, for, uh, for, to all aircraft flying over the ICs. Uh, in the ICs is where the rules of there is a flight in total. I uh, think of instance that uh, they will be in an area where there is no jurisdiction, so the provision of air traffic services, uh, we to comply with the rules of their in full. Uh, the next thing is on regulation number 10. Uh, 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 this is just uh, brought up by in, in reductions of some uh, regulations, and we inserted regulation 6 seven and eight are sub-regulations to these regulations. So uh, where we've seen from six, sub-regulation six, sub-regulation seven, eight, those ones have been inserted to these regulations. And uh, sub-regulation two, oh, sorry, sub-regulation three, uh, we uh, inserted uh, as Subregulation D, just uh, for clarity. On subregulation uh, four, five, six, I uh, this just uh, that the provisions of subregulation two, which was introduced, is being made a uh, reverence too. And in regulation number fifteen. Uh, we, it talks about a, a, a remotely piloted aircraft system. Uh, we, so we're replacing the ARPA system with the US or unmanned aircraft system. Uh, take note that uh, previously we had uh, initiated a, a, a remotely piloted aircraft system regulations, but later on it was changed. This was changed to be in tandem with the changes which we did. Uh, to the uh, unmanned aircraft system regulations. Uh, 
uh, that is the condition of the length of the next page and uh, on regulation number 17 uh, this was also reviewed reviewed for clarity and uh, the regulation which uh, is we it says that now it reads uh, a person shall not operate an aircraft in a prohibited area or a restricted area or a danger area the particulars of which has been duly published in the article information publication except in accordance with the conditions of restrictions or permissions granted by the government of kenya so uh, that's number 17 on regulation number 20 uh, this regulation was just reviewed to include a manned aircraft system in the right of way rules and uh, to harmonize the civil aviation us regulation as i said in uh, sub regulation 15 this actually was to be in tandem with the civil aviation and manned aircraft uh, system regulations which were published previously now it continued and actually the introduction which was brought is sub regulation 3 to this regulation so and an aircraft system and sorry an unmanned aircraft system shall give way to manned aircraft or vehicle shall not pass and and shall not pass over under or ahead of it unless it is well clear so that is the introduction of that regulation on uh, right of hand uh, rules on regulation 22 uh, it is more of the uh, similar to the previous regulation and this was also reviewed to harmonize with uh, civil aviation uh, an aircraft and manned aircraft system regulations and uh, it is included in the like uh, what has been in added there is a uh, sub paragraph e where an aircraft and um, sorry unmanned aircraft system shall yield the right of way to all aircraft and vehicles. So that's the introduction to that regulation. Uh, Sub-regulation uh, regulation part six, uh, sub-regulation two was reviewed for clarity and uh, it reads that uh, a flight plan shall be submitted or filed by a competent person who is licensed flight uh, dispatcher or a pilot prior to operating. So we've just introduced that uh, a person who is who shall submit a flight ban should have the, should be a competent person, and that competence can be uh, through uh, licensing as a flight dispatcher or a pilot. Of course, a pilot through training he has all the necessary capabilities and knowledge on on filing of flight bans. Uh, number regulation 56 uh, we also did a review for clarity uh, exceptions under sub regulation 2b uh, and that is shown in the last uh, uh, highlighted point that is sub regulation p where it says elsewhere that than, uh, elsewhere than a space fight in this regulation in sub regulation 6 a at a height less than 150 meters or 500 feet above ground or water, except when necessary for takeoff or landing, or except by uh, by permission from the appropriate authority. That is now the traffic service uh, uh, providers or ATS authority. Our uh, number regulation 59. It is about uh, it was also to amend it was amended it was also reviewed for clarity and the exceptions under subregulation 1 b separated as it applies to both a and b uh, the exception is uh, the first uh, there and says that the except when necessary for takeoff and landing or except when specified uh, specifically authorized by the appropriate ADS authority. So those, uh, that is the just the addition which was uh, done 
to this uh, sub regulation or this regulation. And uh, on regulation number 62, uh, it is on the rules applicable to IFR flights outside controlled airspace. And uh, what was done is just editing. We edited this regulation and changed the section title case. Initially, it was on. Uh, it was just to change and then to make the case appropriate. Uh, six trip four. It is called. It concerns the position reports for IFR flights outside controlled airspace. This was uh, the amend This was only amended correcting the marginal notes uh, for clarity. The marginal notes are the, side, the sub small heading which is provided in, our, in these regulations. And uh, number regulation 68, like in all other regulations, there's a revocation clause. Whenever there is a change to the regulations, we normally issue an amendment clause so uh, like previously, the regulations which we are amending here in, were written 2018. So as the case now, we are amending these regulations uh, after uh, we propose these amendments and they will be now 2018. It's actually, instead of reading 2018, it's supposed to read 2021. And uh, schedules in these regulations are, are also reviewed and formatted with uh, what they change the, the schedules were retained, and otherwise, what we did is only we review and uh, format it. Uh, to this end, I conclude uh, the proposed amendment to this matrix. Uh, back to you, moderator. Thank you, Richard. Uh, I think uh, that was a uh... An, an elaborate presentation of a, a fairly short matrix, eight pages of a matrix on the amendments that have gone into the draft civil aviation rules of the air regulations 2021. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite the technical team, uh, that is uh, Evans and uh, Richard, to address any of the already received written submissions from the stakeholders uh, thereafter, we will be able to open up the floor for any question and answers. And I would like to remind our participants to facilitate a better uh, consideration of your questions. If you are able to post a question in the Ask a New Question button in the bottom right corner of your screen, that would help us to package an appropriate answer uh, within good time. But those who desire to take the floor also, just indicate in the Ask a New Question button that you'd like to have the floor and we'll allow you an opportunity to uh, address the your question directly. So uh, back to you, Richard and uh, Evans, for any comments on the, uh, com uh, any uh, presentation on the already received written submissions on these draft regulations. Thank you, uh, Lawrence and uh, I said uh, in the initial opening, we received uh, comments. We, ripped, uh, we, we received the written submissions from uh, the NS directorate, that is the manager of travel services, and the East team. And uh, we, uh, the regulations uh, actually measured on. Uh, Typical uh, type of areas like uh, space flight, and in some cases, uh, in some cases, there were a uh, number which uh, may just may, may, may uh, consider uh, and use of change uh, space flight uh, where there was a prescription, it uh, uh, brought issues. Of we we changed from prescription to specified. And uh, our colleagues also wanted us uh, to re-embark on a prescribed. And the reason we changed from prescription into specified is that uh, 
through the legal uh, teams which we and the legal drafters within the state, there was a need to provide uh, to change the word prescribed to read the word specified in that uh, in the in in the specifications the authority has made uh, some technical guidance to provide or to guide the industry and it, uh, where we say the specified it is either in the schedules or in the technical guidance material and uh, when we do specify again we go ahead and uh, we, should, we should just continue uh, to speak to quote on make this exact reverence they say a space bite in the toilet schedule so you will not need to require to prescribe this uh, that uh, uh, technical guidance uh, because it's already provided for through the schedules or through the technical guidance material uh, let me give the opportunity to my colleague, uh, Mr. Evans or coach, to just mention a few of those uh, areas where the air travel services are highlighted. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, good morning, uh, participants. Yes, indeed, we received uh, feedback from uh, air traffic services. And uh, the first one was on um, regulation number three, that is on application of the rules of the air. And uh, the indication was that uh, the text should read uh, or should uh, consider that re these rules apply to aircraft operations. But uh, legally, uh, when uh, a person is used in the regulations, it can mean an individual, it can also mean an entity that is recognized by law. So as a service provider, when uh, the regulation reads a person, that entity is considered as a, as a person. And uh, the other <coughs> issue was on uh, regulation number five, about uh, submission of a flight plan. And uh, the indication from uh, the air traffic services is that there are various means of submitting a flight plan. And therefore, this includes uh, automation where competency of the entity or person submitting a flight plan might be irrelevant. You will realize that uh, Sometimes there are challenges if an incompetent person is allowed to file a flight plan. Um, also, using that automation means whereby you would find that a flight plan has been filed, but it doesn't meet the criteria. And so we thought in uh, consolidation and uh, coordination with uh, the analytical information services uh, inspectorate, that we include this, that whoever files a flight plan is a competent person. Now, there is a difference between the person who files a flight plan and the person who presents the flight plan or who transmits the flight plan for acceptance. The person who submits a flight plan is the one who signs it. So if it is a pilot who is supposed to fly and has delegated this function to somebody else to file, that flight plan, the pilot will indicate the details in the flight plan, sign it, the person who presents the flight plan or uh, forwards the flight plan for acceptance will only be doing a very small role, but the originator and submitter of the flight plan in this case is the pilot. So that person has to be competent and understand what is supposed to go into a flight plan so that when the flight plan is received and uh, that aircraft is flying even if it is from a remote area to another remote area uh, we know that the flight plan is representative of uh, the intentions of the flight uh, there was also 
a comment on uh, regulation number 17 and um, the ATS in their submission request that we maintain uh, the content of that regulation as per the annex so as to avoid discrepancies. We will coordinate with uh, the originator of uh, uh, this comment so that we can clarify and come up with uh, a clear and uh, well understood regulation. I don't think there is anything else, as my colleague said, the rules of their regulations apply to everybody and everywhere. Uh, and uh, so Kenya has not filed major differences. And so we didn't deviate uh, from what the annex says. Thank you. Back to the moderator. Yes. Uh, as we await the uh, moderator to come, I also want to uh, just to add on what my colleague had, uh, allow, uh, Mr. Evans had indicated. On regulation number 17, the use of a person and uh, instead of an aircraft shall not be flown. So, uh, uh, a person, an aircraft does not fly by itself. So, I uh, think some of these are the uh, issues which uh, were brought in by our legal team and uh, the team fit that uh, even now, if an aircraft is being flown, it's being flown by a person. So uh, those are the new, those uh, additions there or amendments there were just, but uh, in the context of the, of the standard or of the regulation, it is maintained uh, other than those uh, popularity that was just brought by the legal uh, team. Thank you, uh, ATS, also for these comments and also how this will be to affect us. Thank you, moderator. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Richard. Uh, I can see in the questions column we have one question from uh, Captain Gad Kamau. Gad is asking: filing of a flight, filing a flight plan is not rocket science. It is more of IT than anything else, allow a competent person appointed by the operator, uh, by the operator's serve. I think you need to further clarify. I, I had uh, Evans try to clarify that it is not the act of filing a flight plan that is the problem. It's the commitment that goes into saying operator so-and-so or pilot so-and-so is, uh, is, is giving an intention to conduct a flight. And therefore, uh, if I got your explanation clear, you are not addressing the physical act of filing, which is what uh, Captain Kamau is talking about, being a IT, uh, a simple task, but it is the commitment of the person indicating their intention to fly. It. Maybe, Evans, you can take that again, just to clarify the question from Captain Kamau. Uh, uh... Thank you, uh, Lawrence, and uh, thank you, Kat Kamau, for your question. Uh, uh, the question uh, talks of uh, filing a flight plan is not rocket science. It is more of IT than anything else. Allow a competent person appointed by the operator to serve. In, in a nutshell, what, we, what the regulation was saying is that uh, a flight plan shall be filed by a competent person. So your last sentiment there supports what the regulation proposes. But now the level of competence is what we are trying to come up and say that a person is competent through which means it's either through training. So the person who you, you, you as a operator has, has competence with he has to have even basic trainings on flight planning. And the, that can be either a flight dispatcher, 
you can be applied to uh, applied operations uh, guy or even the pilot himself the pilot can also still uh, fill the flight plan and send the person uh, representative who, who is just taking a flight plan which has been filed by a qualified uh, or a, by a pilot or the operator in that uh, case and uh, we were just stressing on the competency. Uh, we know this is normally uh, issues which we see from time to time. We come across a number, somebody filling a flight plan in a manner that it cannot qualify for acceptance. So to just for, for that uh, clarity, we require a competent person. So it is the operator who, will, who should actually uh, if he has to with the person and he knows that this, that person is having the necessary qualification and training, uh, it's accepted by this regulation. Thank you. I think there is no other question on the same. Uh, we had, uh, if there is any other, uh, we can return back to you, moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, I can see uh, Captain Kamau with the uh, with 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 a follow up question uh, maybe captain kamau we can allow you the stage to make a, an oral intervention just to, to to get the perspective of your 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 your, your question is that okay if it's okay captain i i will be inviting you to activate your mic and, and and make an intervention so that uh, we are clear on your concern and the explanation provided by colleagues uh, your participant button is active if you can click on it you should be able to give us your oral intervention Hello, uh, morning, Lawrence. Do you, can you read me? Yes, Captain. Go ahead. Thank, thank you, Lawrence. Um, previously, um, before the in the old AIP, before the flight plan was presented to ATS, there was a requirement that the AIS officer who receives the flight plan. Um, note any errors and make corrections. That's the reason why we don't file flight plans directly to air traffic services, just to make sure that the flight plan has gone through AIS and, and that officer has ascertained that the contents uh, will serve for that flight. Now, uh, the issue of who files a flight plan, I think in the regs, what I read, it says a pilot or a flight dispatcher. Now, flight dispatch officers are only required for schedule, schedule operations. And in our, the company that I work for, we don't run schedule service, so we have operations personnel. And an operations, the operations personnel that we work with have been here for 10 years, long before uh, the, uh, uh, these regulations or promulgated um, 2021, and they've been filing flight plans on our behalf. We we do not want to restrict the filing of flight plans to certain personnel um, because there is still the requirement that the AIS officer who receives a flight plan will note the um, any mistakes in the flight plan, refer to the filer and just make sure that those mistakes are corrected before the flight plan is is uh, presented to ATS and the flight is activated. Um, it, it's just that we don't restrict to just a few people that have the uh, capacity or that have the authority to file a flight plan. Anyone uh, appointed by the operator that the operator feels is competent enough to file a flight plan, can file a flight plan, and the it, it, the uh, AIS unit, the ATS officer who picks it up, sees a problem, can then make the corrections and 
we can move on from there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Captain. Thank you. Uh, just to allow us a further understanding, I can see Michael Kishuki Madenge is also saying that this should remain unchanged. The flight plan should be submitted by a competent person prior to operating. I would like to invite on board our manager, ANS Aerodromes uh, Oversight, David Ondieki, to weigh in on this argument and see and, and provide a perspective of this argument that uh, probably would address the concerns raised by the two. Uh, stakeholders. Uh, thank you, Lawrence, moderator, for the opportunity to respond to this particular question. I appreciate uh, the feedback that has been given by Captain Gad Kamau and the concern in terms of uh, the processing of flight plans. And we sincerely appreciate as an authority in terms of uh, the cooperation framework that has been in place in terms of submission and the management of flight plans. However, for this provision to be drafted and indicated as it is, is basically to try to assist each other in terms of the time spent uh, to, to make submitted flight plans acceptable to the authority in a way that they can be approved and um, processed through the, the, to the air traffic services for purposes of managing the flight. It is indeed okay, maybe we can look at the issue, but the key point that the authority is trying to bring in is that uh, it appears that the, I mean, the, the operators are using a number of uh, staff who may not be conversant with the provisions of uh, filing a flight plan to the extent that at times they take the previous flight plan, try to copy the details, even if the, the flight is uh, undertaking a, a different journey or route. So it compromises the process of uh, ac making this flight plan acceptable to for purposes of uh, uh, acceptability to the air traffic service provision. So we will be able to relook at the item, but uh, let's also appreciate where the authority is coming from regarding this item but uh, so, so that we can be able to work in a way that is supportive of each other. And then lastly, if, if we have a competent officer who is adequately to submit a flight plan and make it acceptable to the authority, then it, it's, quite, it's quite acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, David. So in essence, uh, I think the reason much of a change is just the understanding that the commitment is what the CA is looking for, who is committing to file the flight plan, but the processes are not significantly altered. And we're just looking at clarifying and ensuring that the particulars of the information presented is accurate for purposes of conducting a safe flight. So any other question that uh, any other participant that might have a question, you're welcome to present your question and as we present the questions I would just like to draw your attention to the poll section we have a poll section on the top right corner there are three buttons chat question poll and people if you click on the polls question we invite all the participants into this in this session to take a, sh a minute or two and uh, just answer the poll question it helps us to improve the manner in which we engage and helps us to improve uh, our our, particip our our engagement with stakeholders. Uh, so it means a lot to us and we appreciate your presence and we would like to just invite you to take the poll if you are able a minute or two to help us uh, improve the manner in which we engage with you. So the stage is open. If we have any other question, would wish to accord an opportunity to any participants who might be ready. So I can see uh, Michael uh, Madenge, I think your question was similar to that of Captain Kamau, and I trust that the response accord given by both Richard and D David uh, have addressed your, your questions regarding the, the person who can file a flight plan. The, 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 what is being provided for in the regulation is not the physical filing, but the person who provides the commitment on the flight plan that they are going to undertake a flight. So we'll allow a minute or two for any question that 
might be out there, anybody who desire to take the stage, we invite you to to request for the stage. In the absence of which, I would like to invite. Uh, I thank all, thank you, Michael. I can see you have acknowledged our response. I, I would like to invite Richard to make his uh, final submissions or any remarks regarding these regulations, and then that will be followed by David, who's the officer in charge of that section, and then we will be able to call off the session and prepare for the sub for the next session. So, Richard, you can have the floor to make your submissions on the draft rules uh, of the air regulation. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lawrence, and uh, thank you also for our participants for your engagements. And uh, this uh, stakeholders uh, forum or uh, forum is just uh, is made actually to address to some of the issues uh, that. Uh, coming up like this, what we have just done. And if there is a need, we always uh, take your comments very seriously. And uh, where we, it is, it is uh, thought to be fit, we will actually incorporate all the comments and we will take them seriously in the review of these regulations. Uh, these regulations are to as are not meant just to be regulations, but also for our compliance. So there is no need for us to have regulations which uh, are difficult to implement. Uh, with this kind of interactions, your comments are taken and uh, it, as we reconvene as, as this team to see and uh, take note of your comments, we'll incorporate uh, um, all of them. I will take, we will take them seriously and we'll incorporate. And hopefully that uh, this before it is being published, we will also share you the final product of this uh, Regulations, and uh, uh, we look forward for even future engagements, and uh, even there are more regulations which are coming for the day. And uh, I thank most sincerely the all participants and Kat uh, Kamau, Michael Matenge, Manager TS, just but to mention a few for your interactive interactive session which we had previously. Thank you, and I'll uh, back to you, moderator. Thank you, Richard. So we'll allow David to make his remarks, and then we conclude this session. Uh, thank you so much, moderator, for the opportunity to make some remarks regarding the set of regulations that we have uh, undergone. Mine is basically to appreciate the feedback that has been received from various uh, stakeholders and more so the commitment in terms of uh, going through the draft provisions that are an update from the what was published in uh, 2018. And specifically on the comments that have been received, both uh, written and um, on email and also uh, through the chat box, I think uh, they are very constructive and uh, well intended. As an authority, I think we'll provide a listening ear and we'll be able to incorporate so that during the next session, we shall be able to compare notes and ensure that uh, whatever submission that was made has been taken on board and if not an, exp an adequate explanation has been provided as to why that has not taken place. So uh, mine is to appreciate and also invite you to the subsequent sessions. And uh, thank you so much for finding time to be part of this first webinar of the day. Thank you so much, back to the moderator. Thank you, David. As we call an end to the session, the first session of today, addressing the rules of the air regulations, we'd like to remind you that the personnel licensing regulations will be re looked at again as per your request on Friday between 11.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. So if you have any concerns in the personnel licensing regulations, you are welcome to present your advanced submissions to us on email, or please avail yourself tomorrow between 11.30 and 1 p.m. to address concerns that you may you may have on personnel licensing regulations. As we close this poll, we also, as this session, we also invite you to participate in our poll uh, and, uh, and, 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 and also 
give us feedback on what you're doing. I can see Joseph Miner. Joseph Miner, you'd like to say something. Uh, I would be, allow you to speak. Let me activate your, your participate button. If you can click on participate, you'll go live and you can be able to make your interventions. Joseph Miner. Joseph, can you hear us? Joseph Miner, we have activated your participate uh, button at the bottom of your screen. It looks like Joseph is having a challenge. We invite you to uh, make to us a written submission. You can send it on email. I'll shortly post the email address that you can use to allow you to give us your comments. We will definitely consider your comments and like David said in subsequent sessions, we'll be able to get back to you, the stakeholders, and uh, give you feedback on what you contributed, what was taken on board, and how that was handled. So thank you very much. As we call off this session, uh, we're going for a 10-minute break. After 10 minutes, we'll re regroup here to consider the draft aerodrome design and operations regulations 2021. So thank you everybody and see you in 10 minutes.